It's the blog segment. The blog. The blog. Bam, bam. Okay, so not right now. I I wanted to talk about. <laughs> okay, so uh, now I want to talk about people trying to help themselves with the IRS because it happens. You don't always need a lawyer. Yeah. Sometimes you can. You you're going to say, well, let me take a look at this. I'm having a little bit of problem. Maybe I could solve this problem myself. So I'm going to kind of direct you. Uh, to how how maybe you can find out how to how the IRS works mm-hmm. and maybe give you some invaluable information to help you uh, solve your own IRS problem if that's what you're inclined to do, okay? Because not everybody's going to hire a lawyer or somebody else to to help them. Uh, some people are going to try to take a look at it themselves. But even you uh, admitted yourself, Attorney Stephen Leahy, if it's under ten thousand well, dollars that you owe the IRS, then you might, you probably and, don't and, need. And actually, if you're making a fairly good living and you owe less than twenty five thousand, you should probably do it yourself. You shouldn't probably hire someone. I, you know, I, I'm going to get a little sidetracked because I got a call from someone and she they owed eight thousand dollars and she was beside herself. She couldn't sleep all the time. And I had and I took. This was last Friday, right before the show. And I sat her, we, I take a deep breath. Let me show you. I, I walked her step by step how to solve this problem by herself. She didn't need me. And she was so happy at the end that, that I could show her how to solve this $8,000 problem that she thought that she was going to go to prison for. And she really did think that. She really thought she because was, a lot of these a lot of folks fall into IRS debt and they they're good people. That's it right. just things happen. Even Abe Lincoln owed uh, his uh, uh, filed, uh, bankruptcy. filed bankruptcy. That's right. Honest Abe. That's so true. it happens so to what, everybody. So now what I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the what they call the uh, the Internal Revenue Manual. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with the IRS and the you're generally dealing not with the code with you know. Uh, the section 26 title 26 of the uh i of the code you're going to deal with the L- the uh, internal revenue manual and the manual you could find the manual at irsdov.com/irm internal Can you revenue say that again? manual irs.gov/irm and it's going to take you to the internal revenue manual and you're going to see that there's that there's uh, 39 seg- parts of the manual, okay? Now, luckily, you don't have to know all 39 parts of these. But if, you're t- if someone sends you, uh, if you're go- being audited, part four is examining process. How the IRS is supposed to go through your the process of an audit. Everything is detailed here in this manual. And this is the way they're supposed to follow it. If they don't follow the manual, well, then you can call them on it. Okay, and sometimes they don't. I, I got to be honest with you. A lot of times, the IRS employee doesn't know the manual that well. Like most lawyers, right? As most attorneys, we use the code, but I don't memorize it. I don't. I can't know it all. You know, in and out, back and forth, every section, because it's just too complicated. Same thing with the IRS. Uh, personnel they don't know all of this they they have may have been exposed to it but they don't so the what i deal with as i said part four is examining process part five is collecting process what it happens when you're in collections how does this all work okay and so you so this is and i you know if i hit i'm going to just hit part five now and you're going to see it's it's a whole huge page of different segments of the collection process so part one fielding collection procedures part two reports part three entity case management systems case processing you know it just goes on and on and on and on collateral agreements trust fund compliance offer and compromise this is where it spells out how they process an offer and compromise so if you're thinking well you know i could pay them pennies on a dollar go to the irs manual look at section 5.8 read it understand it and then fill out the form so you know what they're looking for the same thing bankruptcy how does if i owe the irs and i file bankruptcy what's how does that process work it's all here you know uh, seizures notice of levies what do they have to do if they're going to if they're going to take something away from me it's here it's written down there's a process step by step exactly the way the the IRS personnel are supposed to cover these things. You know, uh, part four, five point one four 
5.14, installment agreements. So they're going to spell out what an installment agreement is. What are the parameters on how they're going to accept them? What kind of expenses are they going to let you use? Because it's going to be, de- it's going to depend on what your in- disposable income is. Well, what is that? That's all spelled out here in the manual. So I mean, I mean, I'm going to tell you, it is, it is so t- to the point, so detailed. It's sometimes. It's it's sometimes mind boggling how detailed they are, how, you know, this is the exact steps they're supposed to take. Did when you're talking to someone on the IRS at the IRS or your revenue officer did and you go back and you look at the, the manual, did they follow these steps? That might be a way for you to appeal a, a bad decision because they didn't follow the steps they're supposed to. Well, how do I appeal it? Well, guess what? There's a whole section about appeals, how appeals are supposed to work, who who does the appeals, what you have to do to get an appeal. You know, 5.15 is financial analysis. How are they going to look at my my finances? How are they going to look at it? What what, what can I put in? You know, so again, this is so important because the, the IRS procedures are right here for you to make sure that they're following. That's what I do when I when I have a case. I'm one of the first things I do is is I make sure that they're following these these uh, p- procedures. And if they don't, I ask for an appeal. And guess what? I win the appeal because I can prove they didn't follow it. So I just had a client who just got levied. They, they were in a pending installment agreement. They're not supposed to get levied in a pending installment agreement. So I and it's it's in right here in the manual that says that. So I pull it up in the manual. This part of the manual says you can't do that. Okay. You're right, Attorney Leahy. We're going to release all the levies. And that's what they did. They released all the levies. And so, again, if you're going to do this yourself, be aware of these rules. It it does get complicated. I get that. Sometimes you need a lawyer. That's what lawyers do is that we go through the rules. But you don't always need one. But if you're going to look for an extension, I mean, uh, uh, if you're going to look for an offer of compromise, read that section. It's not that hard to to read that section and understand what they're looking for. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's why it's so important to do, you know, Get in contact with Open Tax Resolution, and they'll walk you through it. He'll help you. He can't help you if you don't call. So 312-664-6649 or visit chicagotaxteam.com. It's going to be your hub or your hub to help fight the IRS. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show lined up for you today, our Conspiracy Theory segment. Sex. Oh, I love it. I he's, love it. I excited. love it. So stay tuned. Listen to our sponsors and come right back here on AM560. The, the Answer. answer. 